Hey everyone, my name is Ace and welcome to Ace Modding. This is um, not the first episode, but it should have been the first episode. So welcome to Ace Modding episode zero, um, where we go over how to install the Baldur's Gate 3 modding toolkit. So first things first, um, we're going to do this guide based on Steam because I use Steam. So what you want to do first is you want to install the game Baldur's Gate 3. You probably have it installed already if you're playing the game, but if you just got interested about modding for Baldur's Gate 3 without having the game, you need to have the game installed for it to work. The second step after the whole game is installed is in the game you're going to go here to manage and go to properties. Under properties you're going to select DLC and there you're going to check the little button for Baldur's Gate Toolkit data. So this is around 10 gigabytes, so it doesn't take too long to download. You just check it and you wait until it's completely downloaded. Then you close this. And after it's downloaded, you go here on the left side and usually you will just see your games. So on this drop, on the library and under this drop down menu, you click it and you also select tools. This will show you a long list of different things that you don't need. So what you're going to do is just up here, search for Baldur's Gate and then under tools, it should show you Baldur's Gate 3 toolkit. So for me, it says launch. For you, it will say install. So you just click install. It's a um, very few files. So just click install, wait a little second and then you'll have it. Then you can minimize this window don't need this either and you're gonna go into your folders so there you're gonna go under this path your computer Windows C programs 86 Steam Steam apps common Baldur's Gate 3 toolkit and in there you're just gonna search for EXE EXE and then what we want is glasses EXE click on that to select it and then right click it and then say something like um, start as administrator something in, in that um, degree for me it says it in German but it should say it in in your language it's relatively at the top and I generally found out that I always do it like this because I found out if you um, run the program as an administrator for some reason it works way better so I would recommend always running it as administrator so this pop-up window will pop up and it will ask you, oh, do you really want uh, to have this app make changes uh, on your computer? And you're going to say yes. And then you're going to wait. Now you basically have nearly everything done. You just need to set up some settings inside the tools to make sure that um, we have the right path um, linked to the different things that the game needs. So it will tell you, please enter a valid data path for the game. You say OK. And then it already tells you here. For the Steam version of the game, the default data folder is Program Files, Steam, Steam Maps, Common, Baldur's Gate 3 data. And then if you don't use Steam, it's this folder usually. So we're going to navigate to that folder. You can see here, C, Programs, um, 68, Steam, Steam Apps, uh, Common, Baldur's Gate 3, Data, choose folder, click OK. You read the terms if you didn't read them already and you agree to them if you want to use it. Then it's a little bit of waiting again. So the reason I'm reinstalling this is because I got a new computer. Um, so I had to reinstall it either way. And um, 
I was a little bit afraid on my old um, laptop that if I would reinstall it, I might lose some of my projects somehow. So I was always a little bit hesitant to actually make a tutorial about it, but this was the perfect opportunity. So I just decided to go with it. Just gonna drink something while it loads. Perfect, here we go. So you will have, you will see if it's your first time, you will see this. If you already created mods like me, you would see usually if it's not a new computer where you didn't transfer your, your files yet, like I, you would usually see your projects here. But if you're new, you will only see this top secret, which I, I never used to be honest. So what I would just do is I would create a new project that I'm working on. For example, the next project is probably going to be Ace, New Races, um, Angels. Then you just click on Create. And it will load in the game here in this uh, window in the background. can in the meanwhile minimize these bars for now or you can just wait so it will open this prompt this is completely normal and have you select the level I would recommend you and the devs recommend it too to choose basic level A because it's the easiest to load in so you select that and then you wait until it's loaded in So you will see different parts here. Um, this is a preview window. This is the objects that are in the world. So if you place an object in the world somewhere in the level, it will show here. This is um, an important section. This is the root template section. Um, here you have error messages. You can clear them for now and minimize them. So here, whoops, here in this section, if you enlarge it, you can see this is the root template section. You can see, you can here choose different like types of objects, scenery, stuff like that. You can see your project down here. So if you click on your project, you will see here the things that you created of root templates listed. Right now we didn't list anything, so nothing is here. Um, and under all, you can like browse all the, or not all, but all available root templates in the, um, in this toolkit, um, for example, if you want to look for a goblin, you write in goblin and then you can see this pink thing, our characters. You can like see different like goblin children in their bathing suits. Um, that's a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I can't show the adults because they're naked. Um, yeah, so this is like what you can do or you can see like here maybe like some decoration like okay this is hard to see um it's maybe more construction but let's see balustrade so you can see in the preview how it would look like and then here on the left this is important too is the sidebar where you can see all the information contained in the root templates so here you just select the root template like we had the, the goblin children and then here on the left, you can see all the descriptions. So display name, for example, is child, visual resource. And you'll see a lot of this is grayed out. Um, if you want to learn how to work with that, you can uh, maybe watch some other guides, but just to give a general overview. Up here are different types of editors that you can select. For example, um, the texture atlas editor is used if you want to add custom icons or portraits. The stats editor is very important if you want to uh, create spells or if you want to link armor and stuff like that. You can open it for a second to show. It will open another window like this. Similar here, you can either see all the projects, but usually you select yours. And then if you want to add a spell, for example, you could go to spell data, click plus and sele select a type of spell. You do have a search function here. If you go to view and click find, 
uh, you have a search function with local search. This means everything in your project. And if you click that global search, it will show you everything in the files. So if you're looking for a certain spell that you want to change up a little bit or duplicate, you could search, for example, for fireball. And then it lists you with the fireball spells or everything that is related with that name in it. And here you could have a spell, double click that, and it will open the fireball spell for you. You can see it's a projectile and then work from that. Same thing for passives, for objects. You can access all the data here and easily see how it's built up to understand a little bit of how these things work. And just get curious, look around a little bit, you know, have fun with it, search for your favorite spells or characters, see how they're built, what information they have listed and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just close this. So another important thing is that we go to project, I think, project settings. No. Where was it? Preferences. Global settings, I think. Game data path, we have that. I think this might actually be it. Just double checking right now. Yeah, this is basically it. So like this, you install the toolkit and then you can work from there. You can watch my other tutorials, for example, how to create your own summons or how to publish a mod and um, or watch some other creators or watch the official guides. I also have interviews with modders that you can follow to check out what they would recommend to start out with. Um, but yeah, this is how you set up the toolkit. And um, if you then uh, want to save everything, up here is the save button. You just click save all and then it's saved and you can just close your project and you will have it saved on your files. So if you want to see maybe a little bit of how this works, let's say we want to create a little uh, goblin child for a little goblin family that you want to do whatever it is, it's just for the purpose of showing how this works, you would probably create new from selected because you don't want to overwrite what's already in the game. You would call this, I mean, we would want it to make angels with this, right? So we're just gonna make an angel instead. Um, That other guy wasn't naked, by the way. They have like Barbie, or he had a Barbie um, type of like body. But uh, here we have an, a male uh, diva, right? So we can just create new from selected and name it down here something that fits our text. So A's and R, Angel A, for example. Click Create. And then you see we have now in our project down here an angel character and if we save that just so to show you how it works in the background that you understand what's going on so we're saving this now we can close um, by the way i found out it's usually works better instead of closing it there if you go to file and exit it usually works directly so if you go to and oh, Mamma Mia. If we go to your programs, to your Steam, um, to your Steam apps, common, and then Baldur's Gate 3 instead of the one of, your, um, of the toolkit, and then you go to data. So basically this level is the same before we went in here and chose the Excel um, as a search thing. Now we go in here and we click on data, and then you can see under, for example, public, you can see here is a new folder, which is called like our project, Ace and R Angels. And this is the GUID. This is the unique identifier number. 
that uh, was generated for our project. So this is just existing once in general and this number is only used for our project. So don't change the names of this or anything like that. Um, at the start, I would also recommend to maybe, if you don't have that much experience yet, don't change anything in here yet. Just try to work with the toolkit because it gives a good like base, but just so you know what like is happening. So here, for example, it then automatically creates subfolders and under root templates, you can see an LSF file. This is the file that the toolkit created automatically for our mod based on the root template that we created based on the existing root template of the diva that we found. So um, everything you do in the toolkit, it will save in these folders here. And there are some certain times where you want to work also inside the folders. But I would say for a complete beginner, it's like a little bit more difficult and advanced maybe to work inside the text files than um, inside the toolkit. But this was just the last thing to show you. and. Um, yeah, that's um, basically how it works. Um, there will also be other folders under mods, for example, of um, your mod that will also be created. Just leave them there. Don't don't change anything at the start. Only like start changing things here when you know what you're doing. Um, and just like have fun, try it out, check out the things that you like about the game in the toolkit, try to understand a little bit how it works at the time. And, you know, just like try to like put the ideas you have a little bit into like practice or try to understand how things could work and um, watch some tutorials. And I think you got this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great uh, night and uh, all the best. Have fun and see you next time. If you like this video, um, please follow and subscribe and uh, yeah, bye bye.